Nigeria is faced with a seemingly helpless situation as regards insecurity. The Zamfara State Governor, Mohamed Bello Matawale, has resorted to self-help and is directing residents of the state, particularly farmers, to acquire guns to defend themselves against terrorists. Governor Matawale ordered the Commissioner of Police in the state to issue licenses to residents willing and fit to bear arms to protect themselves against the armed criminals. The governor approved the immediate closure of all markets and some filling stations and banned the use of motorcycles in Mada, Wonaka and Ruwambori districts as well as Yendoto Emirate in Gusau and Safi local government areas of the state. He also ordered security agents to shoot violators of the ban on site. Uh, in Benue State, Governor Samuel Otom uh, says the continued attacks on communities in the state by uh, alleged Fulani headsmen and the killing of innocent people were not because of the open grazing prohibition and ranches establishment law, but due to a hidden agenda of the aggressors and the failure of the federal government to protect citizens. Now, Imo State, uh, a 10-day amnesty to bandits operating and hibernating in forests within the state has been given for them to leave the woods and surrender themselves and their arms to the traditional rulers of his bombardment. Now, the Imo State governor hopes that they might disclose this. Uh, other states are also facing a similar issue of insecurity. Well, for more on this, I'm now being joined from Kaduna by retired uh, group captain Sadiq Garbashew, who is a private security and defense consultant. Uh, so good to have you again, uh, uh, group captain. Uh, it, it's, it's a tough time for so many state governors at the moment, uh, and they've resorted to this self-help. Uh, what would you say is uh, making them to come to such a conclusion, uh, considering how difficult it is to contain arms when they eventually get into the hands of citizens, like the way uh, the governor is uh, asking to be done? Very much. Uh, unfortunately, with a heavy heart, as somebody who is a retired military man and also a stakeholder in a uh, safety and security issues, uh, national safety and security issues. It is sad to hear a governor sort of, uh, you know, passing a vote of no confidence on our security architecture because uh, there is no two ways about it. If a governor can come out and call on the citizens of his state, I think as far as Zampara State is concerned, I don't talk maybe of other places, what the governor has done is to pass a vote of no confidence that she does not feel the national forces comprising the military, the police, the intelligence services, and paramilitary can safeguard his people. So it is a very sad development because uh, in modern societies, in modern societies of this 21st century, what is normally the norm is for the means of violence. The monopoly of violence should be restricted to the government through its uh, security agencies. So while we have other non-governmentals, you know, trying to get arms, it is really, really a bad situation. Like I said, it is an abnormal thing. It is an aberration. But maybe we could say it's a cry for help in a desperate situation that probably requires desperate measures. Now, having said that, even in this your introduction, I have heard what of uh, governor has directed. Governor has uh, ordered. Well, in all honesty, again, I would like... Uh, this is a democracy. In democracy, the security agencies are servants of the political masters. But the political masters also should understand how security agencies function. For the security man, what is important is a uh, chain of command. From whom do I hear? So uh, when you look at the extant regulation, there is nowhere, there is no provision for a governor of a state to order the commissioner of police to issue licenses. So please, whether it is uh, a mistake from our media, Oh, it is what the governor said. I would like us to get that straight away. Ordering the police commissioner or directing the police commissioner is not there. The extra regulation we have concerning firearms, unfortunately, is the very aged Firearms Act of February 1959. Of course, it is outdated. When you check that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that act from front to back, the only mention of governor is, three, is, is in three places. Only three places governors were mentioned. And it has nothing to do with ordering the commissioner of police to, uh, you know, to, to, issue, to issue weapons. So these are very, very important things that we have to know. What, they, what, 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 what the law requires is 
it, it gives the power of issuing license to the inspector general of police, who in turn can delegate such powers to any police officer. The only thing you know where governor is mentioned is that where it says in section uh, in section five two that the commissioner of police of a state, with consent of the governor, may prohibit the possession of uh, what I call part three weapons. I will come to part three weapons. That is just one mention of the governor. The second mention is section twenty five, which says the IG with the consent of governor can issue licenses for manufacture and repair of firearms. The third mention of a governor is that the governor has the right within his state to set the fees that should be collected for the granting of licenses. So it is very clear that uh, whether it's a modification we're going to do, but for now, the issue of governor directed, governor ordered, commissioner of police to police its a no-go area. It doesn't even start. If I may uh, interject here, the situation has gone out of hand and so many of these governors have been writing to Abuja, seeking Abuja's cooperation uh, from the Inspector General of Police to the National Security Advisor to the uh, Defense Headquarters and it looks like the more they do this, the more the security situation goes out of hand. If you were in the uh, uh, position of a governor, what would you be left to do if indeed you've met with the president, met with the defense headquarters, national security advisor, inspector general of police, and nothing seems to be happening. And there's pressure on you from your residents because so many people are being killed. What will be the solution as a security consultant that you offer to such a governor? Well, uh, the, 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 the advice I will give to a governor first is to have the books examined. What are the actions that are within his purview? He can either do that himself or he'll contract other people to do for him. You have to look at the books. What does the book? Because like I said, it's ill advice now that will make the governor say that he directs. If he's properly advised, that you'll find that he's not completely helpless. The, uh, the, the, the Firearms Act has divided firearms into three categories. There is category one firearms. Those ones are completely prohibited. And those ones have to do with uh, arms and ammunitions that are used for, by the military. They include artillery weapons, projectors, rockets, bomb, grenades, machine guns, and any weapon that uses 7.62 millimeter caliber or 3.03 inches caliber or 9 millimeter caliber. Here I'm talking of the AK-47 and the uh, machine guns that we use in our military. This, this type of weapons are prohibited. You cannot even talk about allowing citizens to have them. It's only the president that can grant permission for the possession or licenses of this one. Then there is category two weapons. Category weapons are, this, are called personal weapons. Personal weapons are shotguns, uh, auto, which are not automatic or semi-automatic, and then sporting rifles. Those ones, again, it's only the inspector general of police, or alternatively, he could delegate power to maybe a commissioner of police or another police in headquarters to issue arms. Now, where the governor comes in, where I say he is not helpless, it's in category three firearms. These are called muzzle loading firearms. They are the den guns, the fleet lock, the cap guns. The ones that you see, if you go to the northeast, in Borno State in particular, you will see the uh, civilian JTF carrying the, this kind of uh, muzzle loading firearms. Now, muzzle loading firearms, the governor, now the, 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 at, at the state level, the governor with the consent of the commissioner of police, the commissioner of police can issue licenses for this category, category three firearms so like i said had it been the governor is well advised he would have been he wouldn't have been talking of arms in general because this event i've seen people give them ak-47 you cannot give them ak-47 but this category three weapons muzzle loading the governor if he looks at that he could approach the government because there's an embargo and again the embargo that is currently existing on issuing of arms is allowed again by section 36 subsection 1 of the of the of the of the firearms act the president is within his right to say in such and such time or subject to such conditions i have suspended the issuance of this so the governor could approach mr president based on the constitutional arrangements we have now where the governor does not control the police that is very important to understand because they are not operating the vacuum approach the president to see what can be done to leave the ban and allow the Inspector General of Police or the Commissioner of Police to allow for the issuance of licenses of the muzzle loading category weapon, category three weapons. That can be done. However, again, the uh, Fire Firearms Act, it has some conditions. 
like we can see in the Americas, you don't just issue arms to everybody. Other that, you have unintended consequences. You may have what some people call cobra effect. Cobra effect is where you bring a solution and then the solution brings unintended uh, you know, uh, uh, circumstances that are even worse than what you want to, uh, what you okay. set out to, uh, to uh, do. So, now, we actually have a situation here, uh, sorry to just cut you in. Uh, we have a situation here where the National Security Advisor doesn't seem to be communicating very well with the uh, security advisor, uh, uh, CSO, uh, uh, to Governor Bello Matawale, because if there is a connection and then a better communication, I don't think that the governor will be having this sort of security advice. How do you think that the national security advisor can do better in communicating with state governors to let them know what the government is doing and so as not to trigger a situation where we have so many small and light weapons uh, in such a state like that. Now, uh, permit me to say, and with respect to all the political holders, I don't want even to exclude Governor Ben Lomotawali. In the, in, the, in, the, in the business of security and safety which I've been involved in, whether it is in the, in, the, in the executive branch, whether it is in the legislative branch, whether it's at lower branch, at local government headquarters, the truth is that there is great ignorance among the political masters on how the military or security agencies you know, operate. If you don't know that, you are likely to be making demands that are unrealistic. You are likely to enter into things or arrogate yourself from powers or think that your local commander can do something that he cannot do. So what I see missing in our, in our politics, one is, is an awareness to really educate the political master. Because I want to emphasize what is important. In a democracy, the politicians are the masters. The security agencies, whether police, whether military, are only to take orders what the politicians. So for you to properly handle the military, to properly advise the military, to properly ask what is within the military or the police, you really need to know how they operate, how they organize, what is the uh, sequence of command. I do not see our, with due respect, that's why you hear some ridiculous uh, legislations coming out from National Assembly concerning security. That's we hear some governors, uh, ridiculous uh, statements about what they intend to do, like this one. We saw this one without taking us back. We saw the issue of, uh, of answers. It's still yes. part of it. The do governor of Lagos State instantly, you know, disowned, disowned the military. He disowned the military, whereas he was the one who, who requested for the, for, for the support of the military. So our security, I mean, our... Controversial. But I, I want to ask you now, sorry to cut in, how do you expect Abuja to react to this demand now by Governor Matawale for all citizens in his state to be armed? Thank you very much. Since this statement was made, I have observed some people have responded. I have seen the response by the Commissioner of Police, Elkana, who reminded, even though media said he warned the governor. Again, that's a very wrong language. There's no way a police commissioner can warn the governor. What I would have liked to see, sometimes it is our media trying to create sensation. You do not warn. A police commissioner is not in position to warn you know, a state governor. Probably he reminded the Zamfara state governor that there is still a ban on the issuance of this. I think Elkana is, by the way, I mean, he's correct to say that. But the people to respond, which unfortunately, like you pointed out, the federal government has not responded. And I don't think this lack of response is good. The person to respond, because I am talking about uh, Firearms Act, we are talking about constitutional control of the police and the rest. The person to respond is either the president himself or the minister of justice, because it is a legal matter. These are the people that are supposed to respond to this demand by Bagu. But unfortunately, as I'm talking to you, I'm not aware. I've had the uh, commissioner of police has answered his own part. I've had the, uh, uh, the CDS has also been asked, and with due respect, if our, uh, here I challenge even the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, our journalists, you are part of this thing. There is a democratic control. You don't go asking a CDS what he thinks about what a governor said. It is not in the realm of democracy. The, it, is, it is not a business of the CDS, with due respect, I have to say. This is a political problem. It is a political solution. It is the politicians that you should be asking the, 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 the attorney general. Or you should go to the president, but you shouldn't be asking any person. Or at most, okay, you could ask the, uh, the, the inspector general of police, because the law gave him the, 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 you know, the responsibility of issuing the licenses with the governor. But any other person, these are political issues. So what I am saying is that it's not even the NSA you are saying, with due respect. It's not, unless if the NSA is going to speak on behalf of the briefing he got from the president. The so point I'm to round off this conversation now. I, I just want you to educate Nigerians in 60 seconds, uh, just briefly, on the consequence of 
everyone having arms, especially in Zamfara State. Now, thank you very much. Uh, the idea by the governor looking at we must accept the, the seeming incapacity of our security agencies to contact the problem, there is a role that the citizens can play. It is a role that is altruistic because anybody who even is not even, even with the gun, you are putting your life at risk. However, if it is not properly thought through, you might end up having consequences that are worse than one would have. Like I said, the, the, the Fire, uh, Firearm Act has uh, made provisions for even psychiatric evaluation before you give somebody. It has made provisions for regular training of people. Now, down at the local level, what I think we should do, if at all we agree this way we are going to do, is to involve local chiefs and local traditional rulers. The goal should be given to people like, already we have uh, Mbanga or vigilante groups or neighborhood watch there. The local traditional ruler should be able to nominate people of good character who should go on this evaluation because again unfortunately we have a lot of young men and even adults that are in drug if we listen to what uh, General Moro is saying in NDLA so you do not want to go and arm somebody who is already in ballast you, you don't want to give him a weapon that is going to, to, to help neighborhood he's not going to help neighborhood he's going to kill many people so unless we follow this and we can look at the idea given by the by the governor since we have to accept our, our, our security is, has not solved the problem but it has to be properly thought through who do you give the gun how do you keep uh, track of the weapons and the ammunition? As it, it is well known now that there's nothing as precious to bandits as ammunition. Okay. If you give people weapons, uh, we, we, keep track we must of thank you so much. This ammunition uh, might end up again with bandits. I'm afraid that's all the time that we have at the moment. Uh, uh, retired group captain uh, uh, Sadiq uh, Garbashehu, we thank you so much for doing this very fantastic research on the, the gun control laws of Nigeria, which are still in place and uh, uh, it needs to be rejected based on what you have said because I mean, it dates back to the 1950s. Uh, we hope the federal lawmakers are listening and uh, will find it necessary to reject these laws. Uh, well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Sumner Sambo.